Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unreal tutorial. In this video we will be adding the floor spawner to our project. So like we've done previously if we navigate back to the spawners folder and we want to right click on the base class and we're going to create a child blueprint from this and we're going to call this one bp underscore spawner floor. Okay so inside of the spawner floor class what we want to do is just tidy up a few things. So in the event graph uh, there's a few things we don't need. We don't need the begin overlap checks or the event tick. And in fact, whilst I mentioned that, uh, something I forgot to cover previously is if we go back to the spawner base class, we can see that in the event graph here, we're not doing anything on these either. So I'm just going to clear these out of the event graph for now. And that is so that we know that the event tick is definitely not being called. And in any classes where the event tick isn't being called, what you can do to save a little bit of performance is to go to the class settings, which is going to be the top component in the hierarchy. Look over to the right hand side of the screen and we can see that we have the option to start with tick enabled set to true. So if we turn this to false it means that this class isn't going to run the tick check at all. Even if you don't have anything coming off of the tick it does have uh, a little bit of a performance here. It's normally negligible but obviously the more classes you have ticking for no reason the more issue you're going to have. So that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to turn this off and it means that any classes which then inherit from the base class here. If we look in the floor class now, we can see that that has also had the tick enabled set to false. So none of these classes will be running the event tick. Okay, so in this class, the main logic is gonna be run off of the event graph and the event begin play. And we just wanna set all of the tiles which are gonna fill the level to be spawned. So that's why we've got that integer ready from previously. So what we're going to do off of the event begin play and I'm going to leave the call to the parent just in case we ever do go back to the begin play in the parent class and add any logic there. We're going to pull off of here and create a for loop. So from this for loop starting with the first index at zero and the last index being the required act account. So we'll just get actors required count. Uh, remember this is the variable from the base class. We want to loop through once for each of these and spawn a floor. So there's a few things we need to account for. The first floor tile is going to be exactly where we place the spawner actor and then we want to offset the location by the dimension of the t each tile each time we spawn one. So what we want to do is we're going to do a check first of all whether the current index is zero. So we'll say equals to zero and then we'll do a branch check. Now if it is we know that we are on the first tile that we've spawned so what we want to do here is we're going to call the function we've made called spawn actor so not spawn actor from class but just spawn actor and you can see that the target is bp spawner base so that we know we have the right one and with that in the uh, the class we also want to go over to our functions and make sure that we click on override and select spawn actor to override just to make sure that we're getting this value returned because we're going to be using that in just a moment. Okay so back in the event graph we then want to promote the returned variable so the, the actor that we've just spawned we're going to promote this to a variable and we'll call this the rear tile. So at the moment because this is the first and only tile that we have in the uh, the level this is going to be the front and the rear tile but most importantly the rear tile. This is also going to be the tile where we get some uh, information so what we want to do is get the actor bounds so we'll pull off of this and we'll say get actor bounds. We want to make sure that we we then want to split the box extent, so uh, split structure pin, and we only want the x-axis, we just want to find out how wide this is because it's going to be square. Uh, we want to multiply that by a float, so float times a float, and we're going to multiply that by two. So because, so remember in the, uh, the floor, what we'll be spawning is our, uh, let's say this section, we're just going to find out how big this tile is and then that way we can use that for the distance that we want to offset the spawning of the next tile. So we'll multiply that by two, we're going to promote this to a, another variable and then we'll call this one the tile size. Okay so if we just plug that in to the rear tile and then we're going to pull off of uh, the reference that we have to the rear tile at the moment so the one that we want to change the uh, the location of and we're going to set the location of this tile and in fact instead of having all of these uh, wires going around everywhere I'm just going to control drag in a reference to the rear tile and I'll just plug that into the target. Now this one's actually going to be quite simple we don't need to do any offsetting or anything yet uh, all we want to do is we're going to set the location of the first tile to be the location that the spawner is at so we'll get actor location and we'll just place that exactly where we are at the moment. Okay with that done we're now going to go back that's the first tile taken care of we now want to spawn all of the other tiles that we've decided are required to fill the screen space so if this isn't the first tile then we want to do something very similar so we want to spawn an actor so we'll just control w that one 
but this time we want to set the location of this first of all because before we make a reference to the rear tile we want to find out where the rear, current rear tile uh, currently resides in the level. So again I'm just going to control W the set actor location. I just realized I got a location and rotation there so uh, all we want is the set actor location. So I'll just make sure uh, we keep this as simple as possible. We can get rid of that and just plug those back in. And again I'll uh, control W the one that we need so set actor location down here. Now this time we're going to plug in the return value so the actor that we want to move is the one which has just spawned and we want to move this to a specific location so that is going to be the location of the rear tile so if we control drag that reference in we're going to get the actor location so we'll find out where this is we're going to add a location to the x-axis so this is the direction that we're moving so a float plus a float and we want the size of the tile so we want the current location of the rear tile and we want to add another tile size to that and spawn this that distance away. We're going to split the structure pin here again and we're just going to plug the x value in here that we've just calculated. We'll get the exact y axis as well so that we know that we're spawning on the same y plane and we can just leave this as zero. We're going to make sure that everything is spawning at zero anyway. So this is going to be important to remember when you're placing the spawner in make sure that it is uh, zero on the z axis because we're using that over here. And then off of here when we've set the location we now want to again set the rear tile. The rear tile will be the actor that we've just spawned and relocated. And that is pretty much the logic at the moment for spawning the tiles. There's going to be a few other things that we need to cover. Um, and in fact, that's going to be left for another video where we look at something called interfaces. But for now, we can hit compile and save. Uh, we will go into the main level. We can drag in the spawner class, the floor spawner. And I'm just going to zero this out, like I said. So X, Y, and Z make all of these zero. So we've got this starting exactly where we want. And then the actor type to spawn, this is going to be our middle set of floors. So we'll get the floor middle. And I think we needed maybe nine or 10 of them to fill the entire screen. In fact, it might even be a lot less than that. I'm gonna try five to begin with. So if we hit play, we can now see that uh, it's still actually quite hard. We need to sort this visual thing out. Everything is white, uh, but you can just about see that if I eject here, we do have our floor spawning. Um, and in fact, if I set this to unlit, that's even harder. No, never mind. Uh, wireframe. There we go. Uh, <laughs> sorry about this. So we have a floor behind us, and then we have our five floors spanning ahead. And in fact, I'm just going to make a quick visual tweak now. So I'll set this to lit, go back out, uh, and we're going to come back and fix all of this up at the end. But I want to be able to see things. So if we turn off color determined by sun, we can see how it changes here. Uh, we then want to just make this a harder color or something a bit darker. So that will be fine, just so that we can see that. Okay. So we have the floor being spawned ahead of us um, and you can see there's actually a little bit of space but that's because there's some logic missing because this one has already gone through the back uh, so this should have hit the collider at the bounds and have already been moved back to the uh, the rear of the the floor line so when that happens this should fill the entire screen um, and of course if we possess this and press resume we can see that the floor is moving towards us Okay, so that is the spawning and the management of the floor. And of course, all we're gonna do then is we can get rid of the test floor that we had there. I'm gonna rename the floor spawner we've just added and I'll call this one spawner floor middle. I'm going to duplicate this, make sure that the X axis stays as zero. The Y axis I'm gonna put at minus 900. So that should be somewhere over here. There we go. And I'm gonna rename this one to spawner floor side left and then do the same thing again, control W. I'm going to call this one side right and I'm going to move this one over to 900 positive on the Y and again make sure that the X is zero. Grab both of these we just want to change this to be the side floor class and now if we press play we can see we've actually kind of getting a little bit closer to the the level being ready to go so that we've now got just something visual that we can look at and different in shape between two different types of floors and again we're going to come back and make this look a lot better and a few visual tweaks a bit later, but this is definitely a start to having the level uh, generated. And then we can see how we're gonna manage the floors and have these recycle themselves to create what looks like an endless uh, level generation. Okay, but for now, like I've said, this is our floor spawning class done. There are a few things that we need to come back. There's gonna be a slight error that I'm already aware of with the spawning, whereas um, 
some weird logic happens when we start recycling these and we're going to come back and make some fixes here so this we will be returning to this class but for now that's everything that i wanted to cover so i'll leave that video here for now as always if you've enjoyed the video or find this useful please do leave a like and share the video around that always helps and of course don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel and as ever thanks for watching and i will see you all next time